So to give you a quick recap of the ways that QuickBooks can receive customer payments and apply them to invoices. So in this example, let's just, I'm just going to bring up customer. And it will show you in this panel below the two outstanding invoices that are going to that have to be paid. So the first method is to actually apply the payment to these specific invoices. And we do that by selecting these two rows. And this is invoice 1006 and 1009. And there we have a total payment amount. So that's the first method, which is the apply to the specific invoice. And there it's important that we have the reference numbers for those two invoices. And it also matches the payment amounts. If we were to do it another way, which is using the QuickBooks auto apply, we choose the amount that's being paid. And QuickBooks will actually find a match and suggest that as which invoice it should be applied to. So it uses a routine to match the amount and approximately the date of the payment to the invoice. The third way is really just to apply a credit to the customer's account. So in this case, we can just apply a $50 credit and save a new and it'll create that transaction. So let's go ahead and have a look to see how Z-Axis imports receive payments into QuickBooks. So the first way I'm going to show you is how it imports receive payments that are applied to specific invoices. So I've created a map here. With this method, it's important that you follow these mapping instructions carefully, as any mismapping with this method will result in an error. So first off, we need to map the customer. We're also going to map a reference number for the payment. Which invoice reference that this payment is paying, the total amount for the invoice, and the payment amount. We've also added in a discount amount here and a discount account as well to show you the advanced features of this type of import. Before we import, I just want to mention that there's several important items that you must check before importing receive payments in this way. First, that these actual invoices that you're paying are in QuickBooks, are to the same customer with the same customer name, have an open balance, and the payment that you're applying is not dated before the date of the invoice. Also, in some instances, you also may need to match the accounts receivable account if you're not using the default AR account. So let's go ahead and import this receive payment transaction into QuickBooks. So what it will do is it will find those invoices and then it will go ahead and actually apply the payments against them. So we can see what we've imported. So here's the payment that we've just imported, reference number 1003, and it's made three individual payments to these outstanding invoices. So looking at the second method, which is using the QuickBooks Auto Apply feature, for this, we need to map the customer name, a reference number, just the total amount of the payment, and then to set here whether it should auto apply, and we set to the value of true. So now we've got two payments, and we can auto apply them to this account. So what QuickBooks will do is find matching amounts of the debt. So we'll find matching amounts of the debt, and then allocate those payments as it believes they should be allocated. So let's go back into QuickBooks to see what has been brought in. So there's two payments here. The first payment of 1500 has been allocated to these individual invoices, and it's left an underpayment. And then we can look at the second one. So here's the second payment, 108, that's allocated to the 
a remaining outstanding invoice, but still leaving a balance on that. So the third way is to just apply the payments as credits against the customer's account. And that's where we set the field is auto apply to false. So let's just have a look at the way I've mapped that. So we mapped in the customer. We've again given the customer payment a reference number. Um, we've put in the total amount and it's auto apply. But this time we'll be picking up the value of false. So now here's the data that we have. We've got the customer. We've got a refer individual reference numbers for each of these payments. The total amount being paid and we're telling QuickBooks that it should not auto apply but it should just add these as a credit to the customer's account. So let's go ahead and import those. So it successfully imported them and let's view those in QuickBooks. So here we have the customer record for Olympic Park. There are no outstanding invoices as yet, but here are the payments that have been applied to the account. And we can see they're just applied as credits um, to be allocated later. So that, in summary, that's how Z-Axis imports receive payments into QuickBooks. So three different methods with three different mapping approaches. There is a support article on the Z Systems website in the article section that describes a lot of these steps that you need to map and how to map those fields.